What's good, everybody? This is Fair Use, Joe Budden Podcast, talking to Adam22. You've seen the thumbnail. Let's go ahead and get to it. This is a, a, a microcosm of this business and what goes on and how some people look at black artists, black lives. Like, come on, Adam, you got a bigger responsibility than this as a multimillionaire from fucking the problem. Truth, truth bomb. <laughs> I know <laughs> all the guys. Look at I know many, many guys from the block, right? I've been there. I know these guys. I interviewed a bunch of them. I fuck with them. I fuck with the GDs as well. None of them have told me that they think these titles are in any way out of line because to them it just seems like common sense. If you're going to interview these guys, of course you're going to talk about the shit that they actually talk about in their Yeah, you sound like a label head. No. Let me say, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't want to ever put a label on somebody unfairly. I don't ever want to like call somebody uh, a culture vulture or call somebody racist or something like that and they're not you know what i mean i don't want to call anybody any particular label and i don't know adam 22 personally okay but i get the feeling this is this is what here's the thing man Adam 22 is the type of white people that you got to be careful of. You know what I mean? You got to be careful of. Um, he's very slick. He's very slick with how he talks. And, and, I, and I actually can appreciate that. I, I can appreciate that, but I know what you're doing. You know what I mean? And um, I'm not saying that he's a culture vulture, right? Like, it's not really his fault that rappers are going out of their way to go on his show and tell their business. He's not making them tell their business. This is what they're doing, right? So you can't really blame him for that. But anytime he gets the, you know, the, the criticism of possibly being a culture vulture, the, one of the things that, he, that I've seen him do is he points to his black staff like, look, look at all these white, look at all these black people that work for me. Which seems real slave master like low key. You know what I mean? Like his his black staff, his black employees are there to cushion any type of uh, talk of racism or uh, a culture vulture or, you know, uh, cultural appropriation, which, you know, what does that even mean? Right. Um, they're there to really cushion the blows from that. And I think that it was very deliberate in him hiring all black people to work for him with the exception of one Mexican. You know what I mean? Um, that's a strategic move. You dig what I'm telling you? Nothing is done. Nothing like that is done in terms of employment um, haphazardly. That was strategic. At least I believe it is. Oh, no, I'm, I'm tight, kind of. I ain't gonna hold you. Think about this. This interview came out, he had no complaints. How? None of the old guys had ask, any complaints. You guys something. are so much more sensitive than the actual game. You know why? Because we're in our 40s. Stop, stop, stop. No, no, let me finish. Oh, I'm gonna say that. No, 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 he's saying, he's saying we're more sensitive. Good. We're the young black people that are these kids' parents. These are our little brothers. These are our fucking nephews that are outside killing each other, and you white people are now interviewing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about when they were saying, uh, what about when he was like, uh, music and dis Okay, but the question, you know, it. I hear what it, I hear what Ish is saying. You know, I mean, I actually appreciate this brother on the podcast because I agree with him uh, quite a bit. I can appreciate what he's saying, and I can appreciate what 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 Joe's saying, and I can appreciate who they are in the podcast world because they don't really do a lot of talk about you know talk about uh, you know serious rap beefs, and at least I haven't ever heard them really feed that whole beef thing that happens in hip hop media. You know what I mean? I haven't ever seen Joe fuel that, promote that, glorify that. I've never seen him really go out of his way to talk on that. You know what I mean? Um, he, you know, maybe like regular beefs on wax, but never anything real serious. I've never really heard, heard the Joe Budden podcast take part of that. So I can appreciate where Joe is. The thing, the thing I'm saying, man, is you can't have more smoke for Adam and for Vlad and have no smoke for the rappers 
who glorify this, the rappers who promote it, the record labels who monetize it, okay? The rappers who monetize it. You can't expect, I mean, what, what exactly are people expecting from Adam or Vlad? Academics gets this same uh, complaint because of Chirac. Oh, you're making their deaths, you know what I mean? You're minimizing their deaths. Hey man, if, if, if this is your, you know, back to what Ish was saying, if this is your brother and if this is your son, the better question is, is why the fuck your son is in the street with a gun? Why black American culture unfortunately seems to embrace criminal culture? Why do we normalize violence? Why do we normalize uh, criminality? When I say, why do we? Because I'm not that old. You know what I'm saying? I'm a part of that. That's the hard conversation. Is we're a part of it. We've all contributed to it. Now, now the whys, I, I mean, man, we, we all would have a different opinion on why. You could say why, I could say why. We could all have different you know what I mean? Diff different reasons as, as, as to why things are the way they are. But at the end of the day, this is what they are. In every city, every metropolitan city that has a good number of black folks, the number one person killed in that city is a young black man. And you mean to tell me you're more offended at Vlad or Adam? Because... <laughs> Because they did a story about some rapper that wants to talk about the shit that they did. Understand that. Ain't nobody happen to get them up there. I don't like them reckless questions neither. But I'm saying ain't nobody making them get up there and talk. These niggas are falling over themselves to get up there and tell their business. So his ops in the music I so that I could then I later love, ask him about it. No, I would right? love to finish. 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 He ain't making the money you are. You sitting there interviewing these black kids that are fucking killing each other and y'all monetizing it. That's not cool. I don't give a fuck what they talking about in their songs. Y'all are turning a profit off of this black trauma of them. So, so it's okay to glorify black trauma. It's okay for us to make money off black trauma. It's okay to rap and sing about black trauma. It's okay for us to celebrate black trauma, but it's not okay for the white man to put a camera in front of you and let your dumbass come up there and tell all about your stupid life. We really gonna play the whole, ooh, the white man is doing it. Yeah, okay, the white man is doing it, but it is niggas falling over themselves to get up there and get to talking because what they want is the 16 year old or the 15 year old behind the camera at home to think, wow, that's a real nigga. A nigga that was neglected in and out of prison, you know what I'm saying? Ain't got no, you know, you got all types of PTSD and trauma from your fucking childhood, you know what I mean? And you get an opportunity to rap or whatever the fuck, and now you want to promote and glorify, man, look. We mad at the wrong motherfucker. We picking that easy fight. That's what, that's what Ish doing to me. He picking the easy fight. Respect, respect to my brother though, but he's picking the easy fight because that's what we all do. It's easier to talk about the white man that's showing it than the niggas are that are doing it because those niggas that are doing it, like Ish said, are your, are your cousins, are your brothers, are your sons. And if I ask why the fuck they're doing it, then I got to ask who, who the fuck raised them. And then I got to look at you, nigga. That's the harder conversation. Why you got grown rap niggas fighting and boxing. That's the harder conversation killing each other. Yeah, they the ones doing the killing because they young and they dumb and they don't fucking know no better. We 45 or 46 years old and we know better because these are our nephews. So you, they not your nephews so and that's why you don't see the Kevin Samuel shit in the same light that we see it because you a white dude and you don't understand what he is except Kevin Samuels was causing a so black drill rappers aren't worth the worthy of being interviewed. I'm not. And this is what I'm saying, like, this is, this is, the, and listen, man, there's always a racial element that you can highlight if you choose to highlight it. If it's easy, I understand, it may be easier to talk about Adam and Vlad because they're unsympathetic characters. These are men who are making money, talking about black trauma and talking about black death. Okay, so what? 
So what? If they weren't there talking about it, then somebody else would be, they would be talking about it too. Somebody else, they would be looking to share that information and tell it. Because that's what we do. Let's be honest. As a young black man, what's the, what's the easy way to get respect as a young black man? Come on now. Like, we, like you don't know? Violence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more violent that we think you are or the more violent that you may have been, the more you have a history of violence, the more respect. Have a reputation of violence, the more respect. More so than doing anything good, more so than helping anybody. If I know that you're super violent, oh man. It's like wearing a fucking medal around your neck. Bro, you're not gonna spit my words, I'm sharp. I mean, that's what I'm taking from what you're no, saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying ask him about his music True. and his content. True. Hey, what I'm telling you is, he's 19, 20, 21 years old, he's gonna give anything just to be on somebody's fucking camera and get some light shined on his project. I interviewed Ralph yeah, Paul. How are they getting light shined on their project, though? They're getting light shined on their project through revealing shit they shouldn't be revealing. You're talking about street shit. Because let's let's understand, that's how a lot of rappers are now getting introduced to, to the world is through court cases and street beefs and murder cases and all this other shit. It's not, oh man, have you heard this song or heard that song? It's... Have you heard of MC such and such? He's in jail right now. Blah, 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 blah. He's supposed to be getting out. He's going to be signed to blah, 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 blah. But he's in jail for this, that, and the other because, because he, you know what I mean? Because they're feuding with these guys and that goes back to what, and you're just looking at nigger shit. Ain't nothing about no music there. Ain't nothing about no music there that would attract you to that person. The, the fan that follows this type of stuff is following the death and the destruction. Like they're watching a movie, like they're not real people. This is why you got little young kids talking about some why ain't you slide for Vaughn, asking Dirk, multi-millionaire artist, everything he touch sells. Asking him why he's not jeopardizing his life and his family. To slide for some gang shit. Because they're watching a movie. It's depersonalized. It. It's almost made. That section of hip hop is almost inhuman. Because you remove the emotion and the love from the music. And just put it with death. And anger and hatred and fear. And the motherfucker that's listening to it every motherfucking day. Watching y'all on social media. It's not watching because it's going to be a, a hot new song. They're wondering if the new song is going to actually incriminate the person who did the motherfucking song. Does this trace back to something? It's not, man, this is a, this motherfucker. This is fire. It's not that no more. With these particular hip hop artists, they're chase or not artists, but fans. They're chasing the death. The destruction. It's like death porn. Destruction porn. Sadness and grief and loss. And it just and, and, and it and it just continues to feed itself, which I believe an artist should be able to do whatever the fuck they want to do. But you can't blame a white dude with a camera. Hey, hey you're white. The fuck that has nothing to do with he it. Lost, he lost his life. I interview rappers all the time. These people are losing their lives, streets. and you keep telling me about the, the business streets. of. And I interview of, them, and they don't. They don't. They don't know about better. crazy shit. No, Adam. because they do know better. I'm oh, telling you, which most one? street rappers, when you interview them, are not going to say shit about their ops, or they're not going to. They're, they're not going to whatever. They're, Older they're, ones. They're smart about it. Older right? ones. Smart ones. He was someone. He was no. He was someone. That's a normal word to me. He was someone. Who was more open about the people he was beeping with? Obviously, he's like Lil Durk's top op while he was living, right? And so he's talking about his problems with Lil Durk because that's a that's a prominent theme in the music and stuff. Stop! It's not funny, Mark. It's not funny, Mark. Stop! His enemy. 
is a word that has been used for as long as time. Okay. He's talking about this stuff in his content, so I asked him about it during the interview because that's what a lot of his content is sure. about. Of course I want to know about the conflict that he has with one of the top rappers that he has beef with. True. Not only that, the people that are watching No Jumper want to know that information. You see what I'm saying? So he has a job because he has an audience that want to hear the shit that he asks. It is really that simple. And because we normalize this type of shit, especially within the music, and we've made it common, you know what I mean? Um, far too common. Because of that, it's created this lane. Like, you cannot get mad. This is the lane. This is, the, this is a lane that's created that is here, regardless of who's in it. I mean, what, do you, what, what, what exactly are we expecting from him? Because nobody really seems to really talk about... Um, why we're so violent with each other in general. This only seems to be an issue in hip hop when a white person records it. When a white person, you know what I mean, has somebody come on their show or whatever, then niggas get to talking like this. Outside of this, don't nobody really talk about it. They just say, rest in peace, such and such, rest in peace, such and such. We just make it sound romantic. You are not saying, guys about you are not saying, making music. True. Right? You're not saying one wrong thing. Right. You are not saying one wrong thing. What I'm saying is I find it somewhat disturbing that somebody that is outside of what these boys endure on a day-to-day -day basis, interviewing them and monetizing it for your own personal gain when these kids are dying. This is them and their family's trauma that you guys are monetizing to turn a fucking profit. And you're calling it journalism. That's not fucking journalism. They're getting so what so what is Ish actually saying? Are you are you saying what? What are you saying here? Are you saying that he shouldn't get a profit from it? Or is he saying that he shouldn't do interviews with people that are drill rappers or people that you know, uh, come from the street and in and out of uh, gangs and in and out of jail? Come on, man. We've made that cool. The past 40 years. What, what, what are you saying? Like, I, I, I don't understand the, the argument. The, the, the only real argument I see is, man, it really is uncomfortable to see a white person hold these interviews. It really seems uncomfortable to have a white guy who has this platform where he just allows uh, the worst of black society in terms of criminality come on there and talk about, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I get that. But that's not an argument. You can't be mad at him allowing a platform and not be mad at the people going on it. This is really that simple to me, man. I, everything aside, all the gender talk, race talk, political talk that I do, at the end of the day, it's about fairness. Is that fair? Like, there, there's no talk about nobody else other than Adam. Like, this didn't exist before Adam. Like, come on, man. Let, let's keep let's keep it real. Remember back in the day with Tupac and Biggie, and they got into it. Remember Vibe plastering everything? You know what I mean? On 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 the cover with Biggie and Puff Daddy and all the magazines, all the different articles that came out. This is a lane that's here. Ending from it as well. No, they're not. They're yes, they are. He's promoting his music career. Care. There's a reason why these dudes, in particular, I mean, they both fly to Los Angeles mm -hmm. to do an interview with me because it's promoting their career and their business that they're building for themselves. The fact that FBG and what's their music? Rent. What's their music about? By the way, the same type of shit. So what exactly is your problem? You know what I mean? Like you understand how YouTube works. You understand how ads work. You understand how marketing works. Like what are you trying to say? He just shouldn't get paid for it because niggas is killing themselves. You know what I mean? Like he has anything to do with niggas killing each other. Oh, okay. Well, nigga, it's okay for niggas to kill each other. It just don't report it. In a situation where some his, his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend shot him or whatever the fuck it was. 
What does that have to do with anything? That's just some bullshit that happened after the fact. See, even the way you just said that. Stop, 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 Yo, you and your girlfriend, you said you and your... I was just saying that to make it clear that he didn't die over some gang shit. Like, it's not like he got killed by a rival gang member that he talked about in my interview. He got into some totally separate shit. Listen, you and your you and your fiancé were gonna... You said you guys got proposed to by somebody to do content. Right. You turned it down. Right. Why'd you turn it down? Because we ultimately decided that we could do a because fine you, job around. You and found you a, black friends growing up? No, I'm talking about you found you, another okay. way to monetize your content and cut them out. Right. You didn't need them. Right. They need you. And uh, no. You just they, said you it. You just said they you just you said just said it. Said. This is a stretch. This is a hell of a stretch. This is a hell of a stretch. This is essentially blaming a white dude for the socioeconomic conditions in the black community. <laughs> you're, 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 you're pretty much making him responsible because he has a platform. They need me. They need me. They one of the biggest platforms in all fairness. Want to do content and, and reach out because to my audience. You just and stuff. said two sentences ago my last question. Every that they catch that videos with millions of views before anybody interviewed. I don't care. You just said that they profited and you profited. That's what yeah, you said. Yeah, it's a cool. mutual relationship. They don't know enough. It's like me taking a 17 year old girl. Or this 18. is a grown man. He just did like seven years in prison before he did this interview. How can you just treat him like a child and say oh, he doesn't know enough? Because great point. Great point. And that's it. I'm going to cut it off because I don't want to be outside the guidelines. Go watch the full video. Hey, man. And, and sub to Joe. Sub to Joe, man. I think he's great for the culture. Uh, great point. He's talking about these niggas like they are children. You not no kid. Okay, if you are if you are in your 20s, if you can vote, if you can buy alcohol, all right? If you could be sentenced as an adult, if you're going to promote a particular lifestyle, guns all in the video, you know what I mean? If you're going to be in all these type of skirmishes and shootouts and murder cases and all this other shit, you're not no kid when the hammer get dropped on you. You're not no kid when somebody lights you up. You're not no kid now that you don't walk yourself into a life sentence. Now you niggas want to be kids. That's some white people shit. That's what white people do. Motherfucker can terrorize the world. And as soon as soon as soon as he gets caught and got to go to jail and sit down somewhere, now he's a child who didn't know no better. Man, we're not about to do no white people shit. These niggas is not no little kids. As long as we have a culture that normalizes it, glorifies it, promotes it, makes it cool. As long as it's a whole bunch of pussy ass older men that was going to continue to make this type of shit cool. It will always be somebody white to record it, to report it, and to show it to the world however he wants to show it to the world. Because you niggas are giving them the content. All praise due to the almighty algorithm. Like, share, subscribe. You can say whatever you want over here. The only rules are talk like you got some sense and be nice. Peace.